about this. And uh, communication is more than words. We know that. It's also about the visual side. Our next uh, guest and talker, Dr. Sue Walker, is a professor of the Department of Typography and Graphic Communication in University of Reading, UK. And you have thought a lot more about this issue. Thank you very much for inviting me. My name is Sue Walker. Uh, I'm an information design researcher and practitioner. And information design tries to make often complex material clear for intended audiences. It takes account of the needs of information providers, as well as readers or users, and brings together the needs and aspirations of each. It's often cross-disciplinary, certainly collaborative, and is reflective because iteration is key to making sure something works. Effective information design also includes using good practice in graphic design and typography, engaging often in collaborative co-design with information providers and users, and uses design thinking to disrupt conventional approaches and to encourage thinking outside the box. It also considers different technological solutions to getting ideas across. I'm going to talk today about two information design projects that explain the dangers of and how people might help to prevent AMR. And the focus with both of them is community pharmacies in the UK and in Rwanda. Information design and architecture in persuasive pharmacy space, or IDAPS, brought together academics and practitioners in information design, architecture, behavioral science, psychology, and pharmacy. It was very much a project about partnership working. And we aimed to show that design can be a catalyst for innovative thinking. And I think that's what we need if we're to help people understand the threat of AMR and to find out what they can do to change it. Now, I'm going to begin with a picture that's perhaps not what you expect when you think of information design. This is uh, Robert, one of a set of figures that presents a different person's perspective on antibiotics and antibiotic resistance. Uh, it's part of a prototype for a campaign that was called Beat Bad Bugs, that as well as figures included badges and leaflets and so on for handing out to patients, pharmacy users. So what's interesting, I think, is how this project came about. It was cross-disciplinary, involving partnership with pharmacy professionals and a pharmacy chain in the UK called Day Lewis. Um, perhaps unusually for a research project, it had a competition format and a long story short, we had five cross-disciplinary teams. We identified these, they had to have within each team a designer and a pharmacist and any other mix. And we worked in a co-design way to generate ideas. Now, I'll just show you a short clip um, from a uh, video that um, I hope will show this. And I'm hoping I can get this to work and that you'll be able to hear it. <laughs> speaking to some patient reps, brainstorming, having a designer involved from the very beginning has been really interesting. Also engage your clientele. Clientele from very small age to adults. 
from the research and clinical arena into another world where I, can, I have to think of other ways and means of translating the message. So I think when you have people of different skills and different backgrounds, yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. it's actually the, the input from the team here that have shown us the site, but also, I think, really importantly, the pharmacists themselves. I mean, what this resulted in was five very different solutions to this particular problem. I'll just very briefly run through these. The first one was a team that included a mindfulness coach and an interior designer. Wow. And this solution was based around the idea that you make the pharmacy a very welcoming place. You'll see there the sofas and the idea was that you sat around and put headphones on and listened to stories about AMR. Another solution was uh, more what you'd expect, I think, from information design, a diagrammatic format that was pointing out differences between self-care, care that you might receive from a, a pharmacy and when you might need to seek medical advice for a particular uh, condition. Um, Another campaign, Love the Skin You're In, was also focused around self-care rather than automatically assuming that you need antibiotics for certain conditions. Uh, Beat Bad Bugs, um, I've shown you some examples of. Um, and another campaign which involved a set of rotating cubes with AMR stories, um, with ones relevant to younger people at the bottom of the stack and adults above. We selected two competition winners to take through to prototypes uh, for, for use in a pharmacy. The Beat Bad Bugs was one, and the rotating cubes was the other one that we took forward. And you'll see here that on each face of the cube there was a, um, a a very straightforward um, message about AMR and the idea with the cubes, you matched them up and you got a, a fuller story. This campaign had some other components on the left there. This was an antibiotic uh, barometer, which um, had, had this been made fully would, would show um, uh, uh, through through uh, the number of prescriptions each week um, in a local a locality in a local pharmacy to get some notion of the idea whether prescriptions had gone up or down, and because this pharmacy sold wool and represented a community of knitting people, um, there were some uh, interventions for younger people around knitted bacteria. Both the prototypes were installed in pharmacies and we asked people what they thought about um, the, the interventions. Um, I think the large scale interventions drew attention to the issues, there was no doubt about that. And pharmacists found them very helpful because it allowed them to talk about uh, antibiotic resistance um, and other aspects of AMR. And when we showed the interventions at the Day-Lewis National Conference, uh, 88 pharmacy, pharmacies said that they would like to have them in their pharmacies, which was very encouraging. The information cards in prescription bags to remind users was a, a very small intervention, but thought to be very helpful. And the short and focused messages, simple, straightforward, patient-friendly language was something that um, was appreciated. Our work in Rwanda had very different outcomes, so the process was similar. Beat Bad Bugs was the starting point for this project because it was spotted by the Commonwealth Pharmacy Association and they were interested in exploring this in some of their work. So we entered a, another partnership, this time with the University of Rwanda and the Rwandan Community Pharmacists Union uh, to do some more work. Now, central to this campaign wasn't a standing figure, but an antibiotic record card. And uh, working towards this um, involved finding out about um, antibiotic resistance and AMR in, in Rwanda and about antimicrobial stewardship. Uh, we also talked with pharmacists to find out how pharmacies worked and what kinds of in intervention might be helpful. Um, it was clear from this initial survey that standing figures wouldn't work in community pharmacies in Rwanda because they're just not not big enough. Um, and there were differences um, between the UK and Rwanda in how antibiotics are used. Um, in Rwanda, for example, there's widespread use of sharing of antibiotics. 
uh, the word bugs wasn't understood in, in Rwanda, hence changing beat bad bugs to beat bad microbes. Um, and we talked a lot about languages and language use. Um, and the, the, the language, the native language in Rwanda is Kin Rwanda. Um, there are French speakers and English speakers. For this project, right, due to funding limitations, we concentrated on Kin Rwanda and English. Um, as we did with IDAPS, we had some co-design workshops to, to, to de develop ideas. Uh, pharmacists, pharmacy business owners joined us for two sessions where we looked at um, prototype uh, rough designs, uh, got comments, got feedback. We visited pharmacies and we engaged in role play so that um, pharmacists and pharmacy users could anticipate interactions in pharmacies. We spoke with um, uh, people in local communities. This is a, a we had a meeting in, in a village school. Um, and as well as and, and together developed a set of ideas and materials for use in Rwanda. Um, the, the antibiotic card I, 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 I mentioned. Um, uh, a lot of the what went on to the card was discussed in a lot of detail with um, pharmacists and pharmacy users. Um, and the idea is that this little card is carried around by patients. And this again was their idea, filled in by pharmacists and by the people themselves. And it was supported by um, a campaign, um, campaign materials that uh, in the pharmacy, some posters and some leaflets and, 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 and so on. Um, as with the work in the UK, we wanted to find out whether these materials worked in, in, in pharmacies. So we ran a small pilot study. Um, each uh, pharmacy that contributed was given a pack um, of, of, of information and they were explained how to, told how they could use this, um, how to record feedback from uh, their pharmacy users and again in, interesting that they wanted to work with WhatsApp as a, as, a, as a means of recording feedback which is something certainly that I've not encountered before um, but it was a, a useful uh, pilot uh, study to find out these things and so although we only had 14 respondents in this, this study um, it was nevertheless helpful to uh, hear what uh, pharmacists thought and here are some of the things, uh, some of the comments on this slide. The pharmacists were very, very keen um, on, on, the, on the, the idea. They desperately wanted to um, be able to hand out the antibiotic record cards. Um, and at the end of the project, in response to this, um, again, working with our colleagues in Rwanda, um, we, we developed a version of the antibiotic record card and some of the other materials that could be produced on a, a desktop printer. Um, and these materials are now available for, for download um, on, in, in, in Rwanda and the Commonwealth Pharmacy Association. But what was very interesting about this aspect of the project, um, the, the materials can be printed out onto a, a sheet of A4 paper like this, but, uh, but people didn't know how to fold the paper to make the leaflets or the cards. So we had to provide a set of instructions that explained how to fold the paper. And that was something that we couldn't have imagined without talking closely with people. Um, so information then, design then, to, to just conclude, it's very much about people. It's about language and visual design. It includes evaluation and testing. And I like to think that by being design-led, um, produces outcomes that engage and stimulate. Now, information design isn't new. And I want to end with three slides from a TB campaign in the 1930s, and I think provides some wonderful example of information design. Um, 
I'm going to show you um, some materials from a set of charts designed by Otto and Mary Neurath in the 1930s. Uh, they devised something called the Isotype Institute, and unfortunately I can't talk more about that today. But this is just one slide that um, explains how TB germs get from one body into another. Um, I've shared this slide with um, TB nurse practitioners in the UK, and they love it because they think it's a very simple explanation that can be very, very useful in communities that don't have English as the first language. Um, so the sort of clear, clear visual presentation is, is one aspect of this work. But so too is the engagement factor. And the next two slides explain what I mean here. This is um, a very a, a slide of some pictures of people. Can you tell who has tuberculosis six habit? Now, it's pretty obvious that the, the fellow in the middle, uh, he looks pretty sick. So yes, he's got it. But it's really, you know, you wouldn't know which of the other people have got TB. And I think that's the point of it. And then the follow on chart, next one, um, in a very clever way, I think explains who are the sick ones um, on the previous chart and what symptoms they have. And I think that's a very nice way of engaging people and getting them to think about particular issues. So I thought I would end with that. Thank you very much for, for listening. Um, a lot of what I've been talking about has been very much a collaborative project. So I'd like to thank my team members, even though they're probably not listening, but thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Walker. This was really, really interesting.